Hi everyone, it's me, Deadpool. This vlog contains spoilers, so if you think you're gonna come away from this without knowing what happens in my first major motion picture, well then you're even dumber than the last angry geek. Take it away, geek! I wanna shoot, baby. Oh, hi everyone, it's Last Angry Geek again. Time for another one of our vlog reviews. I just saw Deadpool, and I really, really, really hated it. No, I'm just kidding, I liked it. Uh, it was a lot of fun, uh, and it was a surprisingly good story. Uh, it's kind of on the low budget end of things, but they kind of use that to their advantage. They made fun of the low budget at several points. Uh, it's constantly breaking the fourth wall, which not a lot of movies in the superhero genre do. And it's also the first ever R-rated superhero film. Let me take you back. In the late 80s and the 90s, there were a lot of cool R-rated movies. Terminator, Predator, Robocop. I think the last really fun R-rated movie was Starship Troopers. So it's been a long time. Movie studios became about getting as many people into their blockbusters as they could. And thus the era of PG and PG-13 took over. But this is an R-rated film. They fought for it to be an R-rated film and, you know... My hat's off to Ryan Reynolds. It took a long time to get this movie made, and he stuck with it, and he worked to get this movie made the right way, and Deadpool is one of the most accurate comic book adaptations I've seen to date. It is almost literally like they lifted the comic book off the page and put it on the screen for you. Uh, it's very funny. It has a good cast. It's a little smaller than most superhero films, but it's good. It's not great. It's not perfect. There were some issues I had with it. But let's break the cast down. First off, there's Ryan Reynolds reprising the role he played in X-Men Origins Wolverine and having a lot of fun with it. He's constantly mocking the mouthless Deadpool. Not constantly, but, you know, you get a few jokes like, you know, there are worse things that could happen with you. We cut to that Deadpool action figure from that movie. He said, well, I'm going to sew your mouth shut. Like, you really don't want to do that, you know. Uh, they, you know, they make fun of it. They make fun of Hugh Jackman a lot. He does not appear in the movie. There's no Wolverine cameo, unfortunately. Uh, but they're constantly making fun of him. Uh, what else? They make fun of Green Lantern, obviously that riff on the whole costume. Ryan Reynolds is perfect for this role. He's got the sarcasm, that dry wit. Uh, he looks like Wade Wilson should look with the makeup. I had a few issues with the origin for Wade. They make it sound like he was a mutant all along, and that's not the case. They mutated him. So technically he was a mutate, not a mutant, but I'm splitting Marvel Comics hairs now. Uh, it's a good performance. He handles the makeup well. He handles the costume well. They CGI the eyes so he can have those white pupils all the time. Not just like for a few seconds whenever Storm and use her powers, but all the time. Uh, I just pointed at my nipples. They're that large. So, it's got me in a weird mood today. Uh, Ryan Reynolds did a great job. He was perfect for this role. He fought for this role for a long time and he got it made. So, you know, Mazel tov, Ryan. You did a great job. This is Finally, the superhero movie he's been fighting for since Blade Trinity, since Green Lantern. He did this one indie film where he voiced a superhero. I mean, he's been trying to get a superhero movie that he could be proud of for a long time, and he finally did it. Uh, the great thing about this story is actually the love story really works. And Wade Wilson is not a romantic character. Yes, he's had uh, some hookups in the past, but I've never thought of him as a man filled with a lot of love. But... That's the best part of the story. The chemistry between Ryan Reynolds and Morena Bakarin is amazing, and she's really good too. She's played a completely different character than she does on Gotham. Here, I mean, we basically kind of take about 10, 15 minutes to follow them throughout the course of a year to see their relationship evolve. I mean, she's this, you know, hooker that he picks up in the bar, and it just kind of involves in this really loving relationship. But he says it best, your crazy matches my crazy. She's just as kind of nuts as he is. They're constantly trying to outdo each other on their bad life stories. Uh, the whole 10 minute long sex scene, which is why you should not take kids to this film, is kind of really amazing because it shows that these two people are actually just falling in love as they try all these different positions and do horrible things to each other in bed, you know? Uh, but she's really good in it. She doesn't have as much to do as I would have liked. In fact, a lot of the supporting cast is kind of underwritten. That's one of the flaws of this movie. But she really did a lot with this part, given that it was kind of, here's the love story part, and then here's the damsel in distress part. That's what you have to work with. But she made it work. Who else was in it? T.J. Miller. T.J. Miller was very funny. We've seen the whole, oh, you look like uh, Freddy Krueger, face fucked a topographical map of Utah. We've all seen those bits. 
Uh, and Weasel in the comic was his information broker, kind of like his sidekick. Here he's just kind of running the bar that all the mercs hang out at. And you got to find a way to work the comic characters you want to use into the story that makes sense. You can't just automatically put them in the roles they had in the comic books sometimes, and I get that. Uh, T.J. Miller, I would have liked to have seen more with him. He had a lot of great lines. I think, you know, the, him, the chemistry between him and Ryan Reynolds was really fun. They were just kind of riffing off each other. According to Miller, there was a lot of dirty jokes that they couldn't put in the movie that hopefully will be on the DVD. But it was really fun. I think, like, the best line he had in the end was, well, I'd go with you, except I don't want to. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. So, again, I would have liked to have seen more of T.J. Miller, but it is, you know, it's Deadpool's story, not Weasel's. Blind Dale, played by Leslie Uggams, another character from the Joe Kelly and McGinnis era. He, they did the first ever ongoing Deadpool book, and they created Weasel. They created uh, Blind Al, who's his roommate. In the comic book, she's his prisoner. She's like some witness to some terrible thing, and he holds her prisoner in his house. But in this, they're just roommates, because, you know, you can't make Deadpool too horrible. Uh, she did find job for, again, what little she had. Uh, there's kind of that antagonistic relationship between Al and Wade where they're just kind of baiting each other and trying to make the other person miserable. Like, you know, oh, I'll pay the rent, but you have to build the Ikea furniture. Well, she's blind, so she's making a mess of it, you know. It's like, you know, just, let's just, there's a knife in you. I didn't put it in there, but I'm going to be the one who twists it just a little, just to, ah, just to annoy you, just to piss you off. So they captured the antagonistic relationship there, which I liked. Colossus was okay. He was just kind of a big CGI character. But again, this is probably the closest Colossus has come to his comic book character. The gentle giant. The big, brutish Russian who preaches peace and goodwill and understanding. I am a good man, Colossus. You could help us, Wade. Be a hero, Wade. So I liked that. Uh, I liked Brianna Hildebrand as Negasonic Teenage Warhead who in the comics is a skinny albino who dies right away. They just took the name and reinvented the character for this, and pretty much just so you can have, like, the shock failure of that moment where she beats up Gina Carano with her power. She's kind of like a nuclear warhead that goes off. A funny thing about the credits is the opening credits is just, like, all, here's the good-looking star, here's the love interest, here's the CGI character, here's the cameo, here's the moody teenager. And, yeah, that's what Brianna Hildebrand plays. She plays the moody teenager. He's like... Sarcasm? Mean comment. Because you're the teenage girl in the movie. And, you know, so they have fun with that. And she finally says something nice at the end. They're like, oh my god, you did it! I'm proud of you! you know. The X-Men, for what they were, were enjoyable enough. You, you remember how I mentioned the low budget? They get to that with the X-Men. And he's like, why is it only I ever see two X-Men in this giant mansion? You know. And that leads me back to them having fun with the franchise of the X-Men, too. It's like, you know, it's like, we'll go see the professor. McAvoy or Stewart? I get messed up with these new timelines, you know. Violence was violent. There were brains being blown out. There were arms being cut off. There was blood and guts everywhere. Beheadings, you know. This is an R-rated film! And they kept it that way. The villains were a little lame. Ed Skrine as Francis or Ajax. He's like, you know, the evil scientist greeting super slaves. I used to be a super slave here. Well, how did you take over then? Why are you working with these people? I mean, they don't really get into the bad guy's origins. They never call it the Weapon X Project, which Deadpool was a part of. The villains were a little ambiguous as to why they were doing what they were doing. Gina Carano had a great look. Uh, I had to laugh at that scene where she has to pop out and Colossus has to stop the fight. Oh, your nipples are showing. She looked intimidating. She looked... I don't know if The Last Angry Geek has a type, but mean-spirited, beefy women just might be it. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe that was a little too much for you. Gina Carano was fine for her part as the uh, muscle behind Ed Scrying's bad guy. They never did explain the matches. I apologize for the pronunciation here, but uh, I'm not going to get this right. But Karan Sony, who played uh, Dupender, the cab driver, he was very funny. Uh, we like how he kind of just is this nice guy with a broken heart. And then the next time we see him, Deadpool's influence has driven him to kidnap his... Uh, successor and it's just it's just a small little part but they have fun with it and shows what, what a horrible influence uh, wade wilson can be on people uh the closing credits were also funny with the animated deadpool and his unicorn and i won't mention what he did to that horn the animated sequence was also funny when he has the knife in the brain that's screwed him up so much he's seen cartoon characters around his love interest 
I should point out also that uh, Vanessa in the comics was a shapeshifter. She was a blue mutant who could shapeshift, but the minute you put a blue shapeshifting mutant in a Marvel movie, everyone's going to think, is that Mystique? Is she related to Mystique? You know, a lot of blue mutants, they never really explain why. So yeah, the violence, uh, the very, very crude language, the humor, that fight with Colossus was the funniest thing I'd ever seen where he keeps punching him but just breaking his hands and like, they all fear the T-Rex, you know. Uh, Ryan Reynolds was perfectly cast. This was his movie. The sporting cast was really good, except the bad guys were a little bland. And on the whole, the sporting cast was a little underwritten. A really good movie, a fun movie that I think adults will enjoy. Do not take your kids to see it, even though it's a superhero film. But I really like Deadpool. I'd probably give it, you know, like a 3 out of 4 stars, 75, 80% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Whatever you gotta go by. If you need to quantify it, that's your quantification. I liked it. Good, not great. But it is a lot of fun. Uh, I don't know if it's a multiple viewings type of movie. Like if you're going to get the DVD and want to watch it over and over and over again. Some movies you just watch once, enjoy it, and move on. This could be that. But I'm glad this movie succeeded. I'm glad we have an R-rated superhero movie that's funny and enjoyable. And it's almost the best comic book adaptation I've seen to date. Until next time, folks. This is Comic Book Issues. And I'm your host, The Last Angry Geek. Oh, shoot. Babe. God, I'm sick of that song.